So without further ado, I would like to um, invite Professor uh, Derek Armstrong uh, to come up. He's um, the, the Deputy Vice-Chancellor of um, Research at uh, University of South Pacific. And um, he's also got the profile of international. So it's kind of quite a big profile. Um, he was formerly Deputy Vice-Chancellor of Education and Registrar at the University of Sydney. So I'd ask you to give uh, Derek a warm welcome as he comes on up. <laughs> and voila. 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 Sorry. Is it true you're a uh, native-born Fijian? Absolutely. I, I, um, I, uh, I, I, I went to a hotel recently in um, Nandi, which is in Fiji. And I was asked, um, um, I was checking in and, I, and, uh, and they asked for identification. So I gave them my driving license, my Fijian driving license. And uh, the bellboy, whoever was taking me to my bag to my room, he says, oh, I, I, I see you've got a Fijian driving license. Where are you from, he said. I said, I'm, I'm, Fiji, I'm from Fiji, I said. <laughs> I'm from Fiji, I said. But I'm not Fijian. <laughs> and he looked at me and said, huh? <laughs> but I'm not. But, um... um but I, I, I really like to thank um, the organizers, John, and, and everybody for inviting uh, myself and my colleagues from USP here, uh, and particularly to, um, to, to lead this workshop this afternoon, um, this session this afternoon. Um, I'm relatively new in F Fiji and in the University of South Pacific, but the, as you, John said, the program there has been going on for some time. I think it's in four years really now since it was first uh, initiated and uh, there's been a lot of development and a lot of hard work gone into it over that time and as somebody coming into it new and having a little bit of experience of universities and how they work and how new management in universities work um, the usual thing is for a, um, maybe be a VC or a D DVC to come in and, and change everything um, it's a bit like politicians in a way, they don't want to be associated with the past regime, everything's got to be better in the future, so let's get rid of what we did before. But I think, I mean, personally I, I don't take that view and, and, and I think that the way I would approach this and the way I did approach this is if something seems to be working, then, you know, let it, let it work and give it a chance and, and find out about it and learn something about it yourself, me, uh, and see uh, how it relates to the priorities of the institution, the university and the region and how we take it forward in the future and, and, and I've been doing that and still am doing that uh, and I'm learning a lot about the um, uh, implementation but also the wider, um, wider discussions at USP about, um, about this and I think you'll hear some more about that this afternoon. So um, I, I, I've become quite interested in the RSD as, it's, as I've learned more and more about it. Um, in part critical, I have to say, and we might get into some of that later, but, 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 it, but, but significantly uh, in a positive way. I think the, the, there's a tremendous amount of um, um, a, a really good work going on both in USP and more broadly within this community of practice, if you can put it like that, uh, around the RSD around the world now. I think it's really important that it is a community of practice which is developing in uh, not just as a holistically but it developing in in relation to the specific needs of um, specific institutions and contexts. I think John would certainly uh, argue that and that's very much why he thinks ground up initiatives are important um, uh, but I think that that is a critical thing for me because institutions universities are in different contexts and they have different priorities, they have different needs, and to some extent have different purposes. And those are all very important. One of the great shames uh, of university uh, life, as, as they have become over the last um, 10 or 20 years, I think, is that they've become much more homogenized in their behavior and practice, and much less well articulated in terms of their purpose. One of the great things about USP, um, it has a very clear purpose uh, and, the, and the RSD is actually quite helpful in articulating that purpose. So the RSD has been rolled out as a top-down initiative as, as John said. Well, 
I think I would, it certainly has, I mean it's certainly got institutional support, it's certainly got resources in there, it's part of the strategic plan uh, and so on and so forth, that's definitely top down. But I think there's a real misnomer between top down and bottom up, I mean I, I in, in some ways they don't mean uh, a great deal to me. Um, the point is about any sort of initiative that works is the way in which it has champions on the ground, people who buy into a vision. I think setting strategic priorities, I would, I'm a DVC, I think setting strategic priorities is really important. I don't think, I don't think an institution goes anywhere without having a sense of itself, its purpose and its priorities. And I think that, that articulating them throughout the organisation, throughout the university, is about the way in which there is an alignment a way, it's part of a way in which the message resonates, but it's also about alignment of different people across the university. <coughs> and in the case of the South Pacific, across the region. And the region is critically important for the identity and purpose of the university there. So I think there's a, I think the, actually the, um, the alignment's the critical thing, and the strategic uh, direction creates some um, a permissive environment for people to work creatively and, and with innovation. So I think there's a, there's, a, there's a strong synergy between top down and bottom up when it works well. Um, but I think that um, the real question for me in, in all this um, is one about developing the university's own capability and capability for us in our own context in the region. I think it's a more important question than just simply implementing the RSD. The, the question is, is how the RSD relates to that development and growth of capability within the region and for the region. And I think it does because in part we do need uh, people in the region who have uh, co uh, competences and research skills project management skills, the sort of things which really are, in many ways are lacking in the region and, all, and create situations or, or, um, or um, create problems for the region in the face of some of the challenges we face of social, economic, climatic um, uh, challenges and the way in which we are um, both supported by and confronted by at times the outside agencies who come into the Pacific to uh, bring in various initiatives around development and how we work with those organisations. So building capacity and building capability is absolutely critical to us as our mission for uh, and in the region. And the RSD, is a, as I say, is a, is a crucial part of that, but it's an ongoing discussion about how we develop that in the future. And for me, I think the ways in which that extends, is extends beyond the education uh, of our students and using building capacity of individuals through their uh, undergraduate and postgraduate programs. It's also about institutional capacity building both the university and the institutions of the region itself and the way in which we work with those. It's about building that broader, what Jeff Scott, for those who were here yesterday, was talking about, about capabilities. And so that's that relationship between competence and capabilities, and that's, I think, one of the areas we're starting to explore in relation to the RSD, what that relationship actually comes down to and how we develop it. It's also about um, cultural competence. It's also about the idea of how an institution works through differences in an inclusive, uh, in an inclusive way. And um, we're university which is located in 12 different countries across the region. We have many stakeholders, many, um, many nations, many languages, many cultures uh, are, are um, evident in the university. And, and they're all part of our region and all critically important to the way in which we understand our sense of identity and purpose and the way in which that is developed and will develop in the future. So I'm, I'm, I've come into the RSD late and I've been very, really learnt about it and learnt from it. But I think one of the most important things I've been learning or ways in which I've been learning is through events like this. We had a good fortune to have a series of workshops uh, just recently 
uh, in, uh, in, in Fiji. And we also established our community, a community of practice. And it's those discussions and conversations which take place as a community, on those different communities, which are actually really important. And a lot of those communities are cross-disciplinary communities because it is about the sorts of ways which we understand the notion of embark and clarify, etc., etc. It's about the sense in which that we, we have conversations about what those things mean, not just about the application of that as a competency. That's, those things are crucially important. So, um, I think the other aspect which we, I think we'll touch on this afternoon in the, in the, in the um, presentations, is about the relationship between the university and its work in the area of the RSD and the community or communities. Are actual people in living and, and working in the Pacific? How, that, how, that, how we can actually start to uh, articulate something about capability building through the ways in which we are using the RSD in practice and our students are using the RSD in practice within communities with which they're working. So that's hopefully something else which will come out this, af this afternoon. It's not for me, is it? <laughs> um, so, I, I don't want to talk any longer. We've got some couple of really good presentations and interesting, stimulating presentations to come this afternoon. And so the first one of those is um, by, she's, where is she hiding? Oh, there she is. She's not hiding. Hina Lal. Hina is the um, coordinator for the RSD program across the university and, uh, and has a wealth of experience in the implementation of the program um, and driving the implementation of the program. She's a, an enormously organized person and, uh, and persuasive person. But I think also Hina has an enormous sense of the vision of the RSD program at the University of the South Pacific and has contributed an enormous amount to its uh, Im embedding it within the, within the university. So I'll hand over at this point to Hina. Thank you.